Well, look, speaking of Irish rugby, Ulster are going to be on the other side of the draw. Before we chat about them, Peter, and their prospects, what about Munster? Because I don't even know where to start with you about their performance last night. I'm sure you've got a lot <laughs> in your head. I don't know how much time we have. But um, <laughs> look, watching at home last night, it was just very, very disappointing. I think um, from minute one, the team just seemed to be playing as individuals. Yes, there were a lot of errors, and it just seemed very infectious where outside. things were going wrong. There were, there were sidetracked moments going on and, and not focused on the game. And it just is... Um, you know, allow, allowing kind of Ulster in for tries like that, it's just, it's, it's, it's massively disappointing. I think for me, the frustration lies around a couple of good games maybe in Europe. You know, you look at those extra games, you look at the Toulouse game and, and, and the Ulster away game, which we were up at as well and we were covering and, you know, some really good performances. But, you know, it just seemed like the attitude wasn't there. And, and, and first and foremost, from a Munster side, in a knockout stage, it just, this felt like a pre-season game where there was nothing at stake. There's, there's so much at stake. This Munster side need to win something they want to win something and and they just for me they didn't exude that kind of that confidence that little bit of arrogance about we want to go and win we want to go and win a trophy why not because it's a knockout game they should be it should be simple yeah they should be and, and it just those simple basics that you know the aggression at the breakdown carrying hard someone latching on someone's back the simple things that don't take a huge amount of talent and the aggression levels at the breakdown and just simple, simple unforced errors, which are, you know, yes, you talk about kind of a, a, whether it's a coaching issue, but no coaches are on the field. So the players have got to put their hands up and take responsibility as well. Yeah, I think, look, at, um, we've known it's been broken for a while yeah. and the false dawn was Exeter to lose. When you look at Exeter and Toulouse in their domestic competitions, they're not the force of old. Leinster blew to yeah. lose away. I've never seen a Munster team who couldn't get up for Europe. But what the challenge is, it's the, the weekly grind. And this, this wasn't a weekly grind. This was a quarterfinal away from home when you've had a very poor performance against, against uh, Leinster with Leinster second string. So I'd be worried now. I, I think it's a difficult task for round three. Um, I think Munster made a mistake not letting Johan go six months ago. Yeah. Because now we don't know how Graham is as a head coach. You know, he's got to learn next year. So um, big question marks. They need a hooker. They need a tight head. Apparently they're not going to get them. Um, you back in, Birch? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult to see. I think it's a two or three year plan for for, for Graeme, Prendergast, Leamy, etc. And will he be given that? I, I, I don't know. I mean, to hear, you know, someone like String say that they, they, they didn't show intent uh, is unbelievable. And you wonder, back to, 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 to Birchie's point, like, should should they have gotten Johan just go on cheerio because it looks like everyone's checked out it looks like players are checked out it looks like like you, tr you you play as you train and I just wonder I, how good are the players training during the week how how good is the, the the message is the intent behind the message from the coaches because you know it comes from the top down as well as yeah the players are on the field but um, it, it is a bit concerning people talk about oh will Ron O'Gara come back to them I don't know why would he come back right now you know what I mean? Because it seems to be in a little bit of disarray. Well, Jamie, you know the, the Ruby world's a village. Like We've all heard for the last year, their yeah. training intensity isn't good, their, their game plan isn't as sharp as it needs to be, but it's just been plodding along. And Munster are better than that. Munster shouldn't accept just plodding along. But for all that, Peter, they're within a, you know, a, a hair's breadth of beating Toulouse and suddenly we could be talking about them in a completely different scenario. Do you know what I mean? Like that, but we saw back to Burn, like, I don't... Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. And, I, and I, I read a quote from, from Johan and he spoke about, you know, how they were, they were happy with that day and how it went. And, you know, it just seems to be the standard of, you know, the line of, you know, 80% wins. But, you know, you want to push on. You want to push on to those big games, the semi-finals, the finals. And... There was talk of, yeah, there were, there were plenty of opportunities last night. But, you know, when the opportunities arose, what do Munster do with the ball? Are they being coached in a way that they're clinical in their execution when they have those opportunities? And, and they're not. And, and in my eyes, Munster have been playing a way that um, a lot of other teams are playing with that diamond shape of 10. Munster have been doing that for a number of years, but it's just not accurate. So for, in my eyes, that comes down to a coaching element you know, the hours you, you spend on a, on a training pitch um, and running the right shape, running the right depth off of that pod, and it just doesn't seem cohesive. You know, 
90% of teams are trying to run something similar. Mm. Um, you just look at the difference in how Leinster do it and how, you know, someone like Maloney runs to the line, eyeballs his defender and is able to pull the ball back, you know, without, you know, breaking stride. It's just all those little intricacies that I just don't feel are being coached at the right level. And then, like, if you, if you come from a fan's perspective here or even the organisation, it's, what, 10 years now since they've won something? Yeah, you 2011, Magners League. Uh, there we go, OK. Even my maths isn't great, right? So 11 years, right? But, um, and I remember playing in that game and I remember the intensity that Munster showed and came back in the second half and absolutely served, served us up. But, you know, the, the fans deserve more in terms of, like, the competition deserves more from them. Like, they're, they're like, one of the, the kings of Europe in, in my regard and they just haven't been at the races, really, in the last, you know, five years. Um, and that's just not good enough for, for what Munster is. The difficulty is you look at that performance last night and it's almost like everybody today, even around here, everybody's talking about Munster. Nobody's talking about Ulster. And Ulster must feel in a way, what more can yeah, we do for Irish fair. rugby? We are consistently trying our best to be the second best team and maybe even the first best team at some point in Ireland. Burnham. Yeah, and, and yeah. Ulster, let's be honest, it was, it was a very good performance and they're bringing through some young players who, you know, will, will be key, key players for Ulster and maybe for Ireland um, as a future Hume has been an example. But they're contenders in this competition now. They, they, yeah. they have a little bit of a blueprint of how to beat Leinster. Yeah. You know, they, if they get back to a final against, against Leinster, if Leinster get through and also get through they were fancier chances so they are the second best province now and and pushing to try and close that gap yeah and look i suppose from an irish point of view that's what we want like an all irish final for this competition would be phenomenal like if leinster can get a, vi a victory like then brilliant but i think for ulster i suppose we want them to to feel like they're contending for real genuine uh, silverware as well peter yeah look big pressure and dan mcfarland and the guys up there i suppose look again it's it's how they they string a couple of, of wins together, a couple of good performances together. They're, they're capable, we've seen in the past, of you know, these big one-off games and, and, and producing. You know, we, we didn't see it from them in, in, in the game earlier against Munster up in the Kingspan. Um, they just lay down on that, after that defeat uh, in Europe, um, which I think Dan McFarlane I think is something that he needs to instill into that Ulster side, you know, building that kind of relentless attitude of week on week on week which we probably haven't seen from them yet but this is a true test of their character yeah and look i suppose it sets it up nicely bernard you know we've got a couple of nice semi-finals to look forward to next weekend yeah for yeah. sure and um, we, we find out um is it western province or West stormers or, or edinburgh for, for ulster later on but absolutely now the cream is rising to the top yeah. um you know i you know I, I'm really excited to see the next weekend's action, um, and it's, it's such a long season. It's really like the, it's like a marathon. You know who's fit, who's got the body's fit. Leo spoke about being able to keep this team fresh. Maybe that'll be the key that they're able to stay a little bit fresher than everybody else because, as Le Jamie said, they've had 60 players play this season. Yeah.